Now we are in the middle of a revolution, a communication revolution. And perhaps if we think of it as a revolution and embrace it as a revolution, perhaps what has happened in the last 10 years will begin to make a lot more sense. And when we think of social media, perhaps it'll put some context to it and hopefully that will start to make a bit more sense. For the better part of the last century, business owned the media. It owned the media through advertising spend on radio, TV, magazines, newspapers. And because it owned the media, it controlled the message. The messages they went out to the general public and the world at large. And in the first years of this communication revolution, we started to see ownership of the media change. It started to reverse. And ownership began to fall into our hands as individuals and consumers. To the point where a single individual could with no connection to traditional media, build up a large following and become a person of influence within an industry. And that could happen in almost any industry that exists in the world today. At the end of 2011, there were 4 billion connected devices in the world. In just three years' time, that is going to almost quadruple to 15 billion. And just five years after that, by 2020, there will be more than 50 billion connected devices in the world. And this shows us that being connected is going to become more and more important. And it's going to be harder and harder not to be connected. Because it's just, it becomes difficult not to be. It's, there's a massive party that you've been invited to, but you refuse to go to, and then you get upset that everyone's having such a good time. Eventually, you're going to have to go. But where does this leave your brand in this communication revolution? With so many connected devices, so many people able to instantly and globally talk to each other, corporate identity has been radically disrupted. And we've been forced to rethink, uh, think about, rethink about our customers and the relationship that they have with you and how they interact with you. 2011 was a breakthrough year for social media. We all heard the stats, how big it is, how fast it's growing, and the imperative that business must, must get involved, must get, get connected. And it was the magic formula, the silver bullet that would radically change everything. And consequently, businesses rushed out in their massive numbers to start up Facebook pages, to open Twitter accounts, and they immediately started shooting out their traditional marketing, advertising messages, only to find themselves ostracized because there is no place for traditional communication on the social web. And businesses found themselves being resident in virtual ghost towns where likes and fans were a little bit hard to come by outside of the people in the office. Well, smart businesses in 2012 will, fo will focus on social intelligence, tapping into the fantastic amount of intelligence that exists out on the social web the conversations that are going on moment by moment about every brand and every industry that exists in the world today. And gleaning from that their place on social media and isolating the myriad of opportunities that exist for your business to go out and build actual communities, deep and meaningful relationships with the people most important to you, your communities and your customers. So the focus of the work that I do, whether it's at conferences or in meetings or in boardrooms, is to bring an understanding of this communication revolution and hopefully an embracing of it. Because when it is embraced, we understand that social media platforms are a way to facilitate better, faster, and more effective communication with our communities. <clears throat> and when we do that, we begin to secure the link between social media and the growth of your business the fabled return on investment. And in truth, the return on investment in social media is influence. You, your business being an influencer, and the return on that influence will be immense.